nothing else really interested me other than like writing and creative writing from when I was a small boy. So first time I performed, um, my mum forced me to go to a open mic night where they were doing like a sort of competition. I knew what my potential could be and I wanted to expand on it regardless. Age 17 to maybe 23, miserable. And all I wanted was to be happy. I see all these problems and I go, can that be solved? And I go, that can be solved. How do I solve it? Really delve into it. Everybody's having a good time. How do I bring this up? It's hard to say like, you know what? I'm actually not okay. Going through the experiences and being on that journey, and what is clear to you now? What is the biggest clarity that you have moving forward in your life with everything that you have been through? Martins. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are here, another episode of Korak Podcast. And of course, we're bringing you special people, special guests in the house. Our guest today is all the way from South London, Mr. MJ Duke himself, with the quality of music that he gives us. This, this gentleman is a confusing gentleman. He can rap, he can sing, he handsome, and he's on Korak Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you MJ Duke. Hey. Thank well, you for having me. Uh, of course, of course. Anytime, anytime, man. You good? You find you coming okay? Everything all yeah, good? Yeah, everything was good. Man, at, at the time we're doing this episode, man, the sun is blazing, man. So I take it that you are the reason for this wonderful heat. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for bringing it all the way from South London. Yeah, yeah. We know how everything happens in the South. Everything is hot. Yeah, we're renowned for, for the heat. For the I like it. I like it. Of course, in the house, ladies and gentlemen, we have BK Creative himself. Hello, hello, hello. And of course, you have me, MC Savvy Boy. And of Korak is still not sponsored by anybody, MJ Duke. So if you have friends in high places, let them know about <laughs> this. And, you know, you know, Adidas, Coca-Cola, we're looking at you. So we always start this podcast in a very simple manner. <clears throat> and it is Korak, destination established by that single step. And we want to know where your steps began. So if you look back in terms of your life, how things have been going, obviously your destination is to make your music well known and everybody out there to understand who MJ Duke is. Mm. So the question is very simple. If you're looking back, what was that first step you took to lead you to where you want to get to? Uh, I think the first step I took was, I was always melodic as a child. I was humming, uh, trying to uh, create something out of, uh, you know, nothing pretty much. Um, nothing else really interested me other than like, writing and creative writing as from when I was a small boy. So I was just found myself uh, listening to more music over and over and over again. I'd rinse through songs. And uh, I think that was when I started uh, analyzing how songs were written and I wanted to uh, make my own. It became, it eventually became a bit of a, a habit turned into a passion and then it became my career. Well, when I, when I think about it, and I, I mean, I, I said you're confusing in a very good way because you're, you're probably like it the most, if I, if I can liken you to anybody out there, probably in terms of that kind of skill set, mm. uh, probably two people come to mind. That's like, that's a plan B. And of course, Maverick Saber. Mm. Uh, I, I never know how to pronounce that surname. Saber, yeah. Saber, whatever. I'm <laughs> sorry, Maverick. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, but you have a very similar style. You rap, you sing. So, and as you say, you're from way back as you remember, you've always been creative. Does mm. this come from a household where music was always in the forefront or this was just you? I think uh, everybody in my family loves music in their own way. Um, my grandfather, he used to be uh, a, a, a singer around London and around wherever he went. He would love to, love to sing. Uh, though not or like busking or just, just <laughs> no 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 just, just like, going around singing like he, for no reason yeah yeah just, <laughs> I see he, he went around I think uh, at one point he was uh, paid to sing okay uh, you know in restaurants and bars and stuff like that but then you know life comes and hits you and goes time to calm that down I, I know that uh, uh, a lot of my family love music in a different way than I love music I love music to make it and it's, uh, it helps me you know uh, realize my feelings but what they like is they have such an eclectic taste so it gave me a good view of uh, what kind of music is out there um, you know just 
So as far back as I can remember, you've always liked music. Mm. And um, you're from a, what's, what's the family dynamic like? Um, how many siblings do you have? I got what, one what was it like sister. growing up? Uh, one sister, um, three cousins. Three. <laughs> right, sorry, <laughs> yeah, get, it, like we're a big, we are a big family, we're, yeah. we're Irish, so. Oh, okay, you're definitely big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of cousins you probably don't know about. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't know about. Yeah, but um, yeah, no. It's but big, just big in your family, family just you and your sister. Me, uh, well, growing up, it was me, uh, mum and dad. Uh, sister from uh, another another uh, relationship. Okay. So we met quite late, but yeah, my sister. So you're, so practically, you kind of grew up like an only child. Only kind child, of pretty much, yeah. And your love for music just comes from an influx of things you were hearing all around you. Mm. And you grew up in South London, right? I grew up in South London, yeah. Oh, of course, you know, everything is wonderful in South London. <laughs> Even crime. It's like, it's, oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good thing to be in. You get used to it. And um, so, as far back as you remember, you've always loved music. So, what else did you do as a kid before music came into like, this forefront? What were you like as, you know, a little MJ Duke running around South London? It's <laughs> um, a good question. I, I hate to say it, but I've always, I've always loved music like that. I, I also paint. You I paint. loved painting. I loved art. I loved anything that was almost an escape. Were you one of them kids that I could just imagine you liked your you liked your me time? Yes. So you like to do your own stuff. Mm. You and then people probably look at you and just wonder what's this kid doing? And you were creating stuff that made sense to you, but people had no idea what you were doing. It was that, was that situation as you were as a kid. I think so. So you're like one of them genius kids in the making. If I wouldn't you, if say you, that at all. <laughs> if, if, you, if you had chosen finance, who knows? You'd probably be like a billionaire by now. But you decided to choose music. So well, mm. how, if you take us back in terms of early memories, what's the first kind of sounds you were listening to? American hip hop was the first step into hip hop in general. And that quickly evolved into um, UK hip hop. And then it turned into grime. And then it turned into back to UK, like garage and drum and bass. And then I moved into really discovering like R&B and soul music. And that's where I think I found my feet into where I wanted to fit in. Okay, so scene. while you were listening to hip hop and trans, you know, transferring going into american hip-hop uk hip-hop um, drum and bass had you started singing at the time no no that was probably more formative of like i i was writing but i didn't know where i was going with it it was more like i was forming the connections in my head on how to structure a song how to sort of you know go and be part of the scene but i didn't know where i was going to fit into it so, so at that time when you were finding yourself, what mm. what do you? What, when's the first time you performed? I uh, first time I performed, um, my mum forced me to go to a open mic night where they were doing like a sort of competition, and they, uh, yeah, I was really nervous and I bombed. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where was this open mic? Where where was this? It was Leicester Square. Is that the square? Mom, one I, I like mommy's mommy's gangster, man. She didn't even take you to anywhere small. Let's start small. No. Take you all the way to Leicester Square. Yeah. But for her to do that, though, that means she must have seen or heard something that you were doing. So what did she see or hear at the time? I think I, I must have just been going to her and saying, what do you think of this writing? What do you think of this? And I think she probably thought the next logical step was other people need to hear this. He needs to build confidence. He needs to get stage presence. He needs to do all of those things. Um, she used to try and push me to go to like music schools and I would always fight against it because... Why? Why were you fighting against it? Because I was afraid that I wanted to be me. I wanted to be as me as possible. And I feel like going to a music school, even though I'm most likely wrong, um, would change that. It would, you're learning from people how to do this, how to do that. And it wouldn't be as organic in my head, at least, as it is now. So in in terms of, do you still hold that same thought process in terms of, do you think, or do you think going to music school puts you in a box and doesn't let you express yourself as organically as you would want to? I'm happy with the choices I've made. Um, I, I don't regret, I don't regret not going to music school. I, I do see the benefits of it now. Um, you know, media training, all of this, all of that. 
and also just knowing people who are then going to be in your industry. It's, it's definitely something you want in your life as an artist. I definitely would recommend you, uh, you know, meet people who are going to be in your industry, especially when you're forming who you are as an artist together. By I, I, I don't I don't regret not doing that because I'm so, happy so with yeah, where I'm at. So mommy was very influential in in your life, yeah. um, in terms of understanding. So she probably saw the dream as all our wonderful mothers do and our mm. parents do see the dream before you see it. Yeah. So if you take us back in terms of how did that go? So you went to Leicester Square. Yeah. Uh, went open mic. How, how open mic? How do they work? So you go there, you put your name down, like yeah, yeah, just gonna down, go. put my name down. I'm eighth yeah. in the list, and yeah, you know, eighth you eighth wait. So, so you you were waiting, and then how did it go? So you went on stage, and when you say you bombed, was there like what you bombed? Because I I don't know what's what's you know I, you're young, you don't have any experience whatsoever. You're just yeah, you're just sort of vulnerable up there, and it's your first foray into something you don't really don't know what to expect and you hope that people will like it um there were people who liked it well what did you sing what did you sing oh i sang a, <laughs> I sang an original song oh your original song yeah oh, nice. is that is that has that song made it to any of your albums no no <laughs> no <laughs> well, and that, it's that, never that, getting released <laughs> well that memory still haunts you yeah it will it, it, you know it, it yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so but when you think about it though so was that like a pivot moment in terms of Okay, I've I've had a taste of this because mm. most people we had a uh, we had an artist on that um, she mentioned that you know how sometimes when you're young and you go on stage and people are like excited and they go like, oh my god and they're like woo and they laugh when they come out mm. like that whole oh my god I can't believe this so she said at the time when when that happened to her she felt they were laughing at her mm. so it killed her confidence for some time how did your when you, after that situation with the open mic what happened to you did you feel I don't want to do this or was that a I can do this I just need to put myself together. Mm. It was more, I want to do better than I did. I, w I went up and I, I knew what my potential could be. And I wanted to expand on it regardless because going up there for the first time, I gave myself a pass in a way. I was like, it's the first time I've done it. I bet the second time I do it, it would be better, at least better, hopefully getting to good. Yeah, you know, so I uh, I wasn't harsh on myself. I think I've been more harsh on myself later down the line than than I have been at the beginning. When I called you a genius kid, and you were like, no, 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 because first of all, you didn't want to go to music school because the thought process at that time was, mm. nah, this is not going to be for me. That's mm. one. Two, most people would have been phased or put off by having a first experience that they seem or they deem as not good. But mm. you seem like you were like, yeah, this is fine. I'll just where does that come from? Where does that confidence or belief in your ability, where does that come from? Have you always just felt, okay, this is a learning process, I'll refine it as I go on? I, I think that comes from my grandfather. He would always instill into me confidence and you would want to never be put off by a failure. Twist the failure into a positive, make it something that can gr you can grow from and be better for the next time round. And I and I would grow up seeing him. You know, he would he would sing. We would go to restaurants, and he would just get up and he would sing. And, I, and th it was the confidence there that I wanted to aspire to. Was he was he good? He was good. Yeah, he was good. He was like uh, like a Frank Sinatra kind of singer. Oh, I can I, I can see you doing a. I can see I can, I can, you kind of have the <laughs> Michael Bublé stroke Sinatra kind of kind of feel. I take it, I take it. I mean, cool. I, with that beige shirt, man, I like yeah. it. It'll it, it go, it go really well. It go really well. So you spent, you literally took your time in terms of defining where you wanted to get to because based on the transition of music that you've gone, hmm. and you can rap, you can sing. Where when you were finding that identity, were you doing both? Rapping and singing, or because I, I believe the open mic was a, you. You tried to sing, yeah. Right? So where does rap and singing come in, and where does that fusion? Go, where, where does that fusion stand in? So every song that I was writing from probably the age of like thirteen to twenty. Hold on one second. You started writing songs at thirteen. Yeah. No training, nothing. This was just you pouring words. Yeah. So who was giving you the validation? Like this is good. This is not good. Apart from mommy. No. No one. No one. It's just like if it sounds good to me. 
I think I've got a good ear for music, I think. so. When you say you were writing music, you were obviously writing the lyrics, but in terms of composing and producing... Yeah, yeah. Uh, that came a little later than, than that. I, so I, as a kid trying to like put his ideas down on to make them a bit more real, you go to producers and you trying to ex explain to them what you want. And it's very difficult to put it into words, uh, an idea as, as complex as that. So I would go to uh, different producers and they would, we would work on pieces of music and I'd always walk away going, this isn't it. And Why though? Why do they always walk away saying this is in, in, in what way? What? Because it, something got lost in translation. Okay. And I felt at maybe, I think I was about 16, 17, where I started going, right, I'm going to produce my own music. And I went, okay, I'm just going to throw myself into this. I didn't even do any courses into Ableton. I just went straight onto Ableton and started going on YouTube. And uh, how do I do this effect? How do I make that happen? And um, yeah, I just, uh, at the beginning, it was just writing lyrics and finding a YouTube beat and going, right, this fits over that. That sounds great. But then eventually when I started producing my own uh, music, I would then go, right, I have these lyrics. I've long forgotten what beat they went to. Now time to, to make something that actually fits with what I wrote. So what, what, what was your inspiration or what was the drive for the lyrics you were creating at the time? Because most people, you know how people lean into breakups, love, whatever. Mm. And... Why, why that is important for me to understand is so listening to you know ladies and gentlemen his latest album it is what it is yep amazing album my thank favorite you. song is superman thank you so i like i like the description and depth that comes into the album mm. and you you clearly think about the lyrics and the way you go between rap and me and blessing were bumping your album and blessing was like is, is he the same guy rapping and singing <laughs> i'm like yeah i've seen him live he's, he's the same guy so before you got to that identity process and you pretty much, because a, a lot of people always tell you, oh, I'm a biggest critic. I don't think this is good. Mm. Uh, I, you know, I showed this guy my music or somebody, but you didn't have any of that. You were just confident in the sense that I know what I'm doing and I'm just going to keep building it. Yeah, sort of. It was, it, the, the confidence really did come from like family. But I never told them that I was really serious about writing things and I'd never show them because I was a bit, you know, self-conscious. I still have that to this day, being self-conscious. Um, what's the term? I am an extroverted introvert. Uh. I'm cool with doing extroverted stuff, but I would prefer to not be So you pretty much there. do extroverted stuff when you have to. Yeah. And obviously being a musician, you have to get out there, network, and you do all that do kind it. of stuff, smile and wave. That's why you never answer text messages when I text you, man. It takes you like forever. I know, I know. I know. But, but, it, there's an anxiety behind that, to be fair. Okay. Well, it's understandable. At least you, you, you're you dealing with it or you're making it work. Because mm. I, I remember now that you say that, you there was a post on your Instagram when you said, I'm taking a break for some time. I mm. just want to stay off stuff. I understand the, the music thing comes in strong. Yeah. But I, I find this very interesting because usually people going through music and when they're growing up. So other than music, what were your interests? Football, girls? Yeah, yeah, all of that. Uh, girls? Ooh. Yeah, I like girls. I know you like girls. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised you like girls. Yeah. But you seem like one of those, I'm just going to stay in my room, going to write music, all that. What, was the, what were the distractions at the time? Because you clearly, you knew what music was, what I wanted to do. But what was the, what's the aim here? Especially growing up in South London. Growing up, pfft. I liked, yeah, I just like hanging out with mates. Um, of course, there's uh, going to gigs and stuff like that. I wasn't too big on being really social, to be fair. So I you think like you've a, got me. Yeah, like you a, got like me a, there. <laughs> like a small, you had like a small close friend. Or yeah. And you, you seem like one of those, you, you, you select who's going to be your friend. Like It's like, it's like an application process. Um, <laughs> nah, nah, you're not going to be my friend. You seem, you seem like that type. Yeah, I, I, I keep a, a very close group of friends. Um, all of my mates, they, they're people who I would definitely, you know, do anything for. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where I prefer quality over quantity in that, in that regard. I'm not one of those people who goes out and goes, right, 
can't wait to make friends or like uh what's the point of going out oh, i want to make friends like i don't I, I don't mind like i'm happy to make friends but it's not easy it's not an easy process for me what are the pressures that you feel growing up because i mean south london obviously is big yeah young kid can sing can rap all that stuff in terms of what are distractions came in did the streets come calling at any point? No. Yeah, you, you you stayed away from all that. Yeah, yeah. Of sports? Course. Were you into sports or anything? Yeah, of I love I love sports. I love playing football. Who uh, do you support? Chelsea. Oh, God have mercy. This is this is God. Sorry, I need to take a drink for that, man. Yeah, go, go. And this yeah. is me thinking I was gonna apply for being your hey friend. Hey man, but after our season, like I, I need a drink. Where's it? <laughs> <laughs> so so you were into all that, but music was always the forefront. Yeah. Always. And you always say to yourself, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So you keep mentioning mommy and granddaddy. Where was daddy? Because I know you mentioned... Oh, he's, he's about. He's, and was he? did he help in terms of supporting your dream and pushing you forward? 100%, 100%. But more like, you go do it. Yeah. Like, just like, I've got no problem with you doing what you, you want to do. But there's always the thing of like, get a job yeah support yourself support yourself do all of this stuff and so he was took more of that role yeah you, you had a job other the music well I've, I've done a few jobs I've, I've done um bartending i've been a waiter where my boss told me to sing to people as i brought them coffee as a, like a new niche he was like this is gonna this is gonna pop and I, it never popped <laughs> um <laughs> so how did i have so you're like you're serving on americana and yeah. the, what song are you singing I was like, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't, I mean, you don't have to sing it. I mean, yeah, I would love it if you it did. Was like, it was like, uh, that's amore. Uh, like, so more like the Italian flow. Yeah, yeah. All of that. Well, that would be cool. Imagine somebody, when the heart hits the moon. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the idea he had. <laughs> and, and obviously, like, I didn't say no. I was like, this is my, this is my job. I got to do it. Boss said, yeah, so. So yeah. what do you think? What do you think about it though? So patient transport was another job. Patient transport. Yeah, you didn't have to sing that, though, did you? No, okay, no. Okay, good. No, no. Okay, somebody trying to die there. Yeah, they go, move, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can imagine the song going, going down. So, but it looks like everybody that had been around you, uh, all the people you had dealt with or been involved with, all knew you were very involved in your music and mm. pretty much wanted to. Obviously, some of them were trying to push it based on what they wanted, but kind of wanted to support you in one way or the other. Yeah. Have you always grown up in the same area of South London? Did you? Is this no, no. Um, I used to, well, the first house that I think I remember a flat I lived in was uh, in Bermondsey. And then been all over the place, actually. Uh, so Bermondsey, Harrow, then Pimlico, stayed in Pimlico for a while, then back to Bermondsey. And then uh, South London, uh, Clapham. So it's not born and raised in Clapham, but pretty much yeah. along a certain area. So in terms of when, how did you know you had found your identity? So when you were going through the rap mm. and, you know, blending, you had mentioned that you had worked with a lot of producers. They were not sure how to handle you till you decided to start producing your own music. Mm. When was that nail hit that, you know, you know what? I know what I want to do. and I know the kind of music I want to produce pretty recently actually um i think i must have been 21 22 maybe 23 where i found out this is the exact thing that i think the sound that i think represents me is like quintessential mj um and what I'll, is what, what 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 represents you what would you define your sound as like dark soul r&b music why dark? Uh, I just always felt something like that. I mean, I wanted to ask you this because listening to your music, there's a deepness in your music. Mm. There is, it looks very conscious. Like, I'm trying to explain something here that is different from what anybody else would see normally. So when you listen to it, it is what it is. Mm. It's very simple. It is what it is. We say that all the time. But yeah. when, when listening to... The toxic, toxic lady, window, mm. fate. When you're listening to all the songs, yeah, don't marry such son. Yeah, yeah. When you're listening to all the songs, there's a deepness. Even, mm. um, even the um, what's the one, socialist? Uh, oh, it's social life. Like. That even that one, it, it starts very upbeat. But when you're listening to, it, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't. You're pretty much saying, look, I don't need to fit in to be. 
Yeah. So you have like a deep flow that comes through your music. Mm. Are you one of them that you always believe to look way beyond what you see? I think I learned how to do that. How, do, how did you learn that? Um, for a really long time, I was just super depressed. I, I hated how my life was going. I didn't enjoy um, who I was, um, how I conducted myself. And I think it took me going down to my lowest point to start really looking at life uh, for what it actually is rather than what I perceive it to be, perceive it to be. And once your perception of how your life is changes, you can change yourself, which then changes your life. But what got you to that point of depression and feeling that low, like what brought that on? I think what brought me to that point was, I think it was, I know it was, um, I got lost in a bit of, um, you know, just doing the wrong things at the wrong time. Mm. Like, I, you know, smoke too much, rot your brain, not being lazy, knowing what you need to do, but not doing it. And no proactivity, just resignation to whatever life will be as it is rather than turning your life into something you wanted it to be mm. you want life to be positive but you can't get a positive life without injecting your own positivity into it if i'm not d feeding anything into it i can't take anything out so it was one of those situations which lasted pff, years and was there like a specific like pin drop moment where you were just like this needs to stop this needs to change or was it like just a gradual incline yeah there, there was um i think a bit of both a bit of both i suppose the gradual um incline to like wanting to do better and then having enough of failing and wasting time and doing the wrong things and just you, I think I went from age 17 to maybe 23 miserable. And all I wanted was to be happy. And it wasn't like, will a career make me happy? Will a job make me happy? Will more money make me happy? And I realized none of that will make me happy. You can only get happiness if you can take happiness where you can. And I would never do that. And I would just, I would always be, you know, my own harshest critic and stuff like that. And I, you want to be as lighthearted in life as you can be in order to really enjoy it. Because if you really get bogged down with the minutia of life, your dreams stay small, I think. And I, I, th then there was the, the pin drop was... I woke up one day and I saw myself in the exact same position I saw myself when I was 18. And I hated it. And how old were you at this time? Like 23. I hated it. It really burned me. And I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? There's something wrong with you. And then I, from that thought of like, what's wrong? I started looking at my life and going, what is wrong? And then I would write it down on a piece of paper and I, to this day, that's what I do. I write everything down on a piece of paper and then I write all the good things in my life. And then I see all these problems and I go, can that be solved? And I go, that can be solved. How do I solve it? Really delve into it, break it down into little portions and go, I can solve this piece of this piece of this piece. And then eventually it's solved and it's gone. And that's a good thing because now that's whittled it down. Anything I don't find a solution to solve I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> it's no longer a problem. It's not my problem to deal with. It just it's it's a write off at that point. It's something you you have it's no be, control. It's beyond your control, so you might as well, you know, do the things you can do. Yeah. Where was music in between so the ages that you were going through that, where was music in, in this? Were you still writing music? Hundred percent. That was all that kept me going. Uh that was almost like my silver lining. I spent I wouldn't go out and see anybody it through those years. I wouldn't really want to go and 
see family. I wouldn't want to go and meet anybody new. I wouldn't want to go anywhere <laughs> apart from Amsterdam. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I want to take it as those are for obvious reasons. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> those are for obvious reasons. Yeah. And for the pie. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they, they got great sandwiches. Yeah, they got good sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> um, but music is what kept me good in that way, like kept me here. So it was integral to have music there to keep me here. Because if I didn't have that, I literally would have nothing. I would literally have nothing. And I don't know what I would have done if I had nothing to lean back on. And music became my crutch to express myself and really pour my heart out and to say the things that I found it really difficult to tell people. Do you find that with things that you find difficult to say, did they come easier to you with your music? So I think is so. it easier for you to put it down in a song than to actually, and for example, if let, let's say Blessing and I were part of your very tight circle of friends, mm. and maybe there's something you wanted to tell us, but you couldn't really express yourself, would you create the song and make us actually understand what's happening? Um, now, uh, me right now, I would just, uh, I'm pretty straightforward with it because I've learned from, from the experience that I've been through. I've learned it's better to be direct mm -hmm. and just say how you feel, get it out there. And then you'll probably hear a song about it. Okay. You know what I mean? But before it would be like, I can't tell people how I feel right now. So I'm just going to express myself to music. I'm going to make something out of how I feel and then I'm going to play it to them. And then they get to know how I feel. And then they'll ask me questions. And then I would be frank. I would just say, yeah, that's how I feel. This is what I'm feeling now. It was like a way to break the ice because there's almost, it's, it's weird because there's an, almost no easy way to just, everybody's having a good time. How do I bring this up? It's hard to say like, you know what? I'm actually not okay. I find, I, I did, I found it hard. And then- Do you find it easier now? Yeah, I do. I feel a bit, I'm a bit more comfortable. I know who I am. So it's just like, yeah, I, I find it easy. I, I'm honestly like. Oh, hey guys, sorry to interrupt your episode. I hope you can please subscribe, hit that notification button so we can get more on wonderful, incredible guests and you can continue to listen to the Korak podcast. Till then, more thanks. Go back to the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, um, MJ Duke will be performing at the Korak Live Music yes. event too and telling you his story through his music and more of this situation will be coming out based on the songs that he's going to sing. Mm. One of the things moving it is i find it very interesting in terms of in today's world obviously mental health and people going through a lot of things mm. but you seem to have gone through it on your own and did you seek professional help or did you you just you just zoned in on your own and made it work i zoned in on my own i knew i wanted to do get get away get away from the that feeling but it definitely took uh good friends around me um they they would hound me as soon as they knew that that's how i felt they would hound me they'd be like you're coming with us you're doing this oh you're you're sleeping until 4 p.m no you're not my mate used to climb <laughs> climb through my window break into my my apartment often and i'd just wake up to him standing over me and he'd just be like smoking a cigarette being like fucking we're going outside it's a nice day and i'd be like oh, okay all right and through that, through good friends and family, really pouring their hearts out to you, I think that allowed me to go, well, there's a chance to feel better. And there's, you know, I got to see things that I hadn't seen in years because of it. Like, even if it was something as simple as going to a festival and, you know, my first and only festival, um, going to- What uh, festival was that? Brainchild. A uh, very like niche festival, but oh, that's your amazing. first and only festival. First and only festival I've ever been to. I'm not a big camper, man. 
Like, oh no, I, I'm not in for the camping stuff. Yeah. I, I want to go home. I, yeah. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not in for you know smelling other people's armpits and uh, you know doing all that stuff. Yeah, now. on the third day, oh whatever. No, 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 we won't go there. But like camp, <laughs> like it's fine. I, I like I like the experience, and I appreciate it. And I big shout out to all my mates who went with me because it was for them that. I even got to experience that. And I'm happy for it, but I'm not doing it again. So <laughs> just so just so that you guys know. Yeah, yeah. Don't break into my house or unless, his house. Unless I'm performing, you know. Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. That's what I want. Yeah, that's fine. I we'll, think that's why we'll, I'm we'll at. come there, you know, stage pass and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, all that good stuff. One of the times I came to see you perform, you one of the questions that somebody asked you was, you know, the best day of your life. And you did mention it was the day you married your wife. Yes. So how did you meet your missus? Because going through all this that you were going through, but how did you how did you guys how did that, that union come about it ties into them dragging me out all my mates dragging me out to thing we went to bristol to go and meet um one of our mates and uh, just you know have a good time and they were saying we're gonna go to this bar we're gonna go to this bar we're gonna do a proper bar crawl and i went oh, that sounds like shit. i don't want to do that let's just go and stick to one bar and just see out the night I know that thing that I was prefer. a boring man. I don't, I don't understand why people like to jump up and down. I mean, I, I jump up and down, I'm not going to lie. But yeah. <laughs> I prefer, I, I actually prefer just, let's just, if somewhere is good, let's just stay there. Well, that was my sentiment, but they uh, they were like, no, 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 we want to we wanna fit as much in as possible. And on the last bar we went to, I saw, I saw this did beautiful it, woman and uh, did she it, Did now, a song pop into your head? It was a disco night and I love disco. So I was just like, I was like, I did a little shimmy over <laughs> and uh, she was like, I went, okay, shimmy back. <laughs> and I was like, oh fuck, uh, I'll try again. And I did and then uh, waited so long. I was so nervous. But yeah, I, I owe my friends for that because that they're pushing me to go out led to the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, no, Mrs. Duke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hope you're listening to this. You better subscribe as well. Yeah, yeah. You better, you better listen to this. So, in terms of now that you 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 going through the experiences and you've been on that journey, and what is clear to you now? What is the biggest clarity that you have moving forward in your life with everything that you have been through? Obviously, music is your thing. You want to keep growing. You just released an album. But what is the biggest clarity that you, you have taken from all the situations you have been through? Don't be harsh on yourself. Don't be unnecessarily harsh on yourself. If you have a goal, be determined and be a man of action. Don't be someone who procrastinates to the nth degree to the point you lose all or drive to complete your thought process. As soon as you have the thought process, you smash it up. And don't be, yeah. Don't get bogged down with the, the, the things you can't control. If there's absolutely no way for you to uh, wrestle control of a situation, the best thing to do is leave the situation and uh, strive for happiness, not money. Strive for happiness and not, re not power or you know, I want people to know me. I don't want fame or any of that. I just, I remembered how it felt to have these certain pieces of music that actually saved me from doing bad things for to myself. For example, you want a, an example? Like uh, Sam Cooke, A Change Is Gonna Come. It's a very, when you analyze the, the lyrics, it's all about getting kicked down and downtrodden, but the change will come. And that kept me going a lot. And Maverick Savers, I need, that was like, I need the good times. And those songs really affected me in a, in a massively positive way that actually kept me, kept me really good. And knowing what it's like to be low, and I know that there are a lot of people who are low, that is the main drive for wanting to release music. I make music as my own therapy and as something I want to hear. But I know that the things that I talk about, because they're healing for me, they can be healing in the same way that those other songs healed me. 
and I and I and I want that for people. I want people to be good. I'd like imagine living your whole life and it's miserable, sad. I did what, it for seven years. It was sad. What did I call? What did I call him? Maverick what? Sabra. Sabra. Oh <laughs> God, man. That's the same. way you guys say? What's it? Sabre. 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 I'm sorry, Maverick. I'm, I'm sorry. I call you MS if that's all right. <laughs> so. You just release it is what it is. It's yes. an amazing album, ladies and gentlemen. Please go check it out. Thank you. Give him as much streams. What was the idea behind it? Because when you listen to, for example, as I said, Superman, hmm. favorite music. It is, this is my interpretation. You can tell me different. Hmm. It's you pretty much saying, stop listening to what everybody wants you to be. Hmm. You know, be yourself, do your own thing. Hmm. And then you have other songs like Windows and Faith, which is, uh, it's a very, as I said, it's deep. Mm. But what was the general concept behind It Is What It Is? It Is What It Is, <clears throat> it embodies my mentality of relinquish control, of thinking that you can control everything. Okay. You can't, you, co there's no you cannot control every aspect of your life. There are certain things where you have to go, it is what it is. Uh, in, in, as we were talking, um, there's things that are out of your control. There's no point in lingering on it and trying to gain control over something that is impossible for you to control. It's time to focus on something better for yourself so that you can be, uh, you can grow. If, you, if you're in a situation where you can't do anything about it, there is no growth. There is only stagnation and uh, that's, part of like in, in uh, Toxic Clouds, where it goes, hold on to the future, darling. I know it seems far away. Don't give your life to worry. Be happy every single day. You know, it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's just, you know the th what's gonna come around the corner will be better. And especially if it was written at your lowest. When it comes to the infusion between rap and singing, how do you know, I mean, this might seem like a very, for me, it's, it's I don't, Hmm. How do you know when to rap and when to sing? How do you know, okay, singing might be better at this point, hmm. or let me rap at the next point? How do you actually blend these things together? Because to me, in my head, I'm like, oh man, this is uh, he killed it. But I'm thinking, how do you actually know how to fit in the rap, the singing? I, I, I think I, I've just been practicing for a long time, but it, it's just when it naturally feels like it's evolving. The song itself, sorry, the song itself is evolving into something more. Every song I've ever written starts off as almost like spoken word. And then it's rapping, it's rapping, and then all of a sudden I just just sort of changes and veers off from the first path that I went on. And I went, right, it's just, just naturally just veers off into where it's gonna go. I don't really have a, um, a set way where I want it to go. It's just one of those things where I just let it be what it is and hopefully people like it. When you're, when you're thinking of, when you're going through your creative process, and obviously you, you have described what the concept of it is what it is, mm. but generally what's the, what's the out of the blue moment when it comes to creating a song? Is it something you see, something that's happened, an experience you have gone through, or does it always have to have a conscious deepness to it? I think it's all of those things. It could be any of those things. It could be I've had an argument with someone and I'll take, I'll feel how I feel about that and I'll take what I feel from that and, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll express myself. It's all, all of my songs are basically just expressions of how I felt at a certain moment in time. And it could have been somebody said something very poetic in a conversation and I've gone, that's great. I love, I love how you put that. And then I go thinking about that phrase or whatever they said, and I'll elaborate on it because it's inspired my mind to go, go a bit further. Um, strong emotions, I think, if I were to pinpoint it. Strong emotions. Your, your emotions have never gotten you into, it seems like everything has always gone into your music. You have not, you have not gotten, you, you have not gotten into like fights or shot somebody. No, no, no. I, I just the police said I should ask you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just check it. No, but you you you've always grounded your emotions to create music, regardless. Obviously, apart from going through what you had to go through. Mm. 
I, I've never wanted to hurt anybody. So fighting was never, I've always tried to be as in control of my actions and my emotions as possible. And I think music allowed me to do that because I knew I had an outlet, no matter how I felt. Right, when you're looking at, when one of the things in terms of, so there are artists out there that when it comes to finding their identity, it's, it's been, they start off one way, tomorrow they're here, tomorrow they're there. Hmm. What, what would you, what's like your advice or what would you say to people and go, look, I mean, you took your time in terms of processing what you wanted your sound to be. Hmm. And right now with social media and everybody, you know, trying to be quick, release this, I'm talented, you know, deadline. What would you, What is your advice? My advice would be take all the time you need um, work, if you aren't happy, no one else can be happy for you. No one else can be happy with you. If you are determined to make something of yourself, it will come. It will happen as long as you are steadfast in your belief in what you can achieve out of it, rather than I'm gonna jump on this trend or I'm gonna do something like that. Instead, it's gotta be, I'm doing this because I want to do it. I'm doing this because I like it and I'm doing this for me. That's gotta be the absolute heart of what you do. If you're doing things for other people, you're not living for yourself. If you're not living for yourself, you're not even you. You're an idea. Mm. It's one of them click moments, bro. <laughs> All that click moments, <laughs> I like it. If you put that on a t-shirt, and trademark it, <laughs> not, to, not to him, but trademark it to everybody else. Yeah. I like it, I like it. So generally, now that you're in a safe space in terms of controlling what you can control, you're married to a beautiful woman, you're happy, mm. what is your, what's your downtime? When you're not doing music, what do you do to engage yourself in, you know, life? Obviously not going for festivals, so mm. what, is, yeah. what, 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 what is the thing that keeps you going? I like... Uh, Gym is good, healthy, healthy body, healthy mind. Um, I hang out with my family. I like hanging out with all my mates, but I'm also quite reclusive still, but in a more healthy way. Um, I work a lot. I, I'm always working on something. My brain, probably an un undiagnosis, undiagnosed ADHD somewhere where I go, I've got to keep on making music because I, that is what I want to do. It's just naturally what I want to do, no matter what. I'll, I'll lie in bed with the missus, she'll fall asleep and she'll complain every morning. She'll be like, you slipped away and you went back, you went on your computer, didn't you? And I was like, yeah, 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 listen to this. And she'll be like, okay, fair enough, productive. And she'll be a cycle of that, like, look at the bags under your eyes, I'm sure you can see. Like, look at the bags under your eyes, you just, you don't sleep that much. You're, you're always up, you're ready to go, always. And I was just like, yeah, I'm just in it. This is what I do, this is what I want to do. And I think there's a, maybe an element of, I've wasted so much time in the past mm -hmm. that there, there's no time like the present. What would your ideal, so we always mention the destination where people want to get to. Mm. And I think on our part, one of most, the destination is obviously defined by yourself, what you see mm. as success, where you'll be happy. And with all the hard work you're putting in now, what, are, what is that destination for you? Where do you want to get to? Where does MJ Duke, where, when will MJ Duke be satisfied or at least feel that, you know what, I'm at the place that I actually want to be? I'm there. I'm there. Uh, I, honestly. Another click moment. I, I, I swear to God, it's just a, a balance between life and work. But my work is my, <laughs> is my enjoyment. I love my job. I love what I do. And I, and I enjoy, I actually, contrary to how it used to be when I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to make any friends. I've actually had people reach out to me and let me know exactly how much the music means to them. And, how it's helped them through times where I've been through those times and I can relate and we just chat and back and forth and you know I respect them and they they respect me and they and that is very 
rewarding in a way because they feel like they're not alone through the music and I get to know I was, I'm not alone in what I felt. And it's almost like validation of like, we can actually get out, of, you can get out of depression. Depression is one of the hardest things to get out of, but you can get out of that hole. That hole isn't as deep as it looks when you're there. When you're there, it looks like a, like it's going to China. And when you're, I mean, you, you were in Japan recently, so yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. you definitely know how far that would be. Yeah, it's, it's a long ass flight. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things, like, I'm there. I've got the balance of mind. I have a beautiful wife. I have family and friends who I love more than anything. I love my job. And I think I'm on the right track. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. Oh, good. I mean, as I said, we did mention uh, you were in Japan. That was your honeymoon, I believe. Yes. And uh, you were still out there doing music and yes. doing videos. And I was following this guy, man. The guy was proper. I mean, I'll try and pretend like I know what, you know, how he sounds. <laughs> that I'm just there thinking, if I had that voice. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so in terms of like collaborations and stuff with music, in other people out there you look or you're hoping to have some collaborations with, uh, who, who are the people you would really love to do a joint with? Who would I want to do, have on a track? There's so many, to be honest. There's so many talented people. But I think I would love to have the people I grew up listening to on the track or on their track or anything, you, any you kind give of Give us your top five in any order. Maverick, number one, for sure. Marv, I'm sorry for getting your name wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Devlin, the rapper, he's fire. Um, Getz. Would be crazy that new album is fire yeah it's crazy it's <laughs> yeah, crazy that new album is fire like kano um eminem it's a good one K K K kano i like kano he's he's he, i can see you guys you're one of them talented people that don't doesn't really care mm -hmm. you know as in you don't get on your own hype which is mm -hmm. i guess it's a, it's a good thing because kano seems like that guy like yeah i'm i can I can sing, I can rap, I can act, but I don't care. I just, whatever I feel like. You seem like you have that kind of vibe. So you and Kano in, in the booth would be nice. That would be see. so good. That would be crazy. Boy, top Boy New Season? Yeah. I, shout me. <laughs> shout me. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So now, what's the plan? Now that it is what it is has been released, what's the plan? So more album um, album tours yeah what, what is what what should we look forward to obviously ladies and gentlemen Korak Live music event August 29th don't Mr. miss my it. man will be releasing buy your tickets all that good stuff but yeah. what is beyond that and you know obviously we we're here on your journey and we want you to keep growing but what what is what are the plans what are the steps in place well the steps I, I, I think is uh, I'm just creating more I'm actually sitting on quite a few albums I've been holding off from releasing for a very long time and I wanted this year to be releasing as much as humanly possible because I there's no it's not doing anything just sitting there so you can expect a few more albums this year uh, a few more singles maybe a couple of music videos but a bit of advice for any new artists don't waste your money on music videos because they're not necessarily not necessary unless there's some sort of demand for it so like an ego static uh, statistic. Oh, why do like, you, you you don't think they're important these days? I think they're great. I think they they can complement your what you're giving the visual to the sound is always good. But I don't know if it's inflation or something. But like like videographers for a standard video, um, I don't know. It's like fifteen hundred quid. Say so. Say so. On, say so. On BK Creative. This is your area. Say so. Every, everyone charges their own prices. <laughs> say so. Yeah, say so. Say so. Say so. <laughs> Maybe I've met, run into the wrong people. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but Just if you got fifteen hundred quid, go and go and uh, 
learn it yourself. No, s- speak to BK, man. BK does <laughs> music videos. He can, he can give you a good price. Yeah, sweet. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. BK. Come on, BK. No, no, Listen. but I, like... Uh, b- Let's music charge him like a thousand four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like like yeah. a thousand four or something. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's just how I felt, you know? Like, nothing wrong with any of that stuff. It's, it's actually better for you to have it. But when you're starting and you're f- you're fresh, you're new, don't think that visuals is everything because at the heart of it what makes the visuals even watchable is a good song so it's It's very true it's very did did i not just say this to you before as well (laughs) are you sure sure? (laughs) he did actually we're actually having that conversation well it is you know he his production videographer anything he's your guy Mm. and we're actually having a conversation in terms of when artists reach out and it's it's kind of a bit more difficult to work with people if the song is actually not wonderful. Mm. I mean, people just think it's oh yeah, hold your camera up, do a do a few shots. Mm. But I mean, you would know better. You you need to yeah yeah no. It, you know, it was one of those ones like I and everyone's taste is everyone's taste. And I'm a videographer, yes, but I'm not a music critic. But I think for me, I was just saying to Jay that I can't relate to or I can't feel like I've best done a video for you if I don't like your song, mm. not to say that if I don't like it, I can't work. But for me, I think like I grew up as a musician, so I play bass mm. and I have a deep love for music. So if I can't connect with the song, I feel like I can't give you my, the best creativity that I have. So I struggle when people come to, and again, everyone's in different places. Everyone's starting out. Some people, some Jay, as Jay says, not BK creative. Some people should just stop music. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I did say it. <laughs> I said it off air. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that was my kind of reasoning behind it. Like I, I struggle sometimes. Like, I don't, like for me, I don't live a life. For example, and this is nothing against those guys. This one, I'm very happy. My face is not on camera. The guys that live that kind of life, that rap about that kind of life, I don't live that life. Mm. So I can't make a music video that's about that life because. That's not me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Fair enough. <laughs> you know? So I hundred yeah, percent agree with yeah. you there. Like if you're not feeling it and it's not something that resonates with you, how can you connect? Simple as that. Well, since you're in your flow, you might as well ask him your question. This is where right. BK Creative give, give ask you his own question. All right, let's go. Um, do you know what? I don't actually have a question for this guy today because I think I've enjoyed listening to what you had to say, but I think my question would be in terms of what you've learned now in your current space in your life hmm. if you could go back let's say and meet 21 year old self 18 year old self what would you say to to them to get them out of that place that you were in at that point quicker or in a better way like what have you felt like you've learned since that you feel like if someone had told you maybe when you were 18 19 that it could have changed the trage- trajectory of your life if that makes sense hmm a good question difficult question uh don't be so harsh on yourself don't take life as seriously as everybody else uh is told to you know life can be good regardless of what situation you're in it's just about a matter of perspective like coming from a point of uh depression that was all about perspective. It was all about how I viewed myself and how I thought people viewed me and how much I cared that they viewed me back then. And now I don't. I don't actually care how people view me as long as it works and I'm happy. And I think there was a lot of pressure back then to, you gotta make money. You, you see people online, you go, I gotta be a millionaire by the time I'm 21. Or I gotta do this and stuff like that. And you really don't, it doesn't, actually it's fucked now because like uh you know cost of living is crazy but like it doesn't feel like in order to achieve happiness you need to be a millionaire you don't need to be renowned in a certain sense you just need to be comfortable within yourself and happy with yourself and know who you are that's 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 the what i would say to my younger self but like you're getting to the point where you know who you are. You're getting very close. That is the most important thing. Know who you are. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. MJ Duke sharing his story, his journey. And we are following. And, of course, we're going to continue on that journey. 
August 29th, tickets available. Link in both our bios, so please get there, get those tickets and come down and have a wonderful day and get to understand this man and his music. It's, yeah. been, it's been a, amazing. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you and so much for having it, me. Of course, all the time, all the time. Well, all I can say, man, just keep giving us our music. It's, it's really good. It is uh, Maverick. Be careful. This guy's coming to take everything, everything, everything. I, I, I'll be right there behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Please watch, subscribe, and all that good stuff. But till then, it's goodbye from BK Creative. I'll see you guys on the next one. MJ Duke. See you at the uh, 29th. And of course, I'm MC Sabi Boy. More thanks.